And then the big tour uh, started. I went to the Philippines and visited all these universities. And that was, that was amazing because I got to hang out with all these people. And yeah, coloring point clouds makes a lot of sense because you can see where the rice casts are burning and where you maybe have really bad intensities uh, on the ground because uh, all the lighter photons get st stuck in the smoke. Um, they were operating in really small little labs and suddenly in had to increase massively in size, so it was always very cramped. It's, uh, and quality checking. Quality checking was the one thing I always paid a lot of attention to because they were supposed to de develop additional products such as land cover maps. And you, if you want to have baby rice classified and you have a 20 centimeter flight line misalignment, then you get a bin centile 80, uh, you know, at the lowest that, that just doesn't serve well for classification. So a flight line alignment was a very big topic there. And I paid a lot of attention on the people do quality checking before they start processing their LIDAR. Uh, another thing was Buffers, you know, if you do tile-based processing, they all got their data in tiles. They did not know about buffering, and that's how there's a, uh, there's a blog article on rapidlaser.com now about the importance of buffering with three exclamation marks, and that was basically motivated by seeing how often people process LIDAR without buffers. Um, and new technology was written. The Philippines was very complex terrain and, and cities right next to it, so I had to come up with um, a last ground new, which was an extended version from last ground, which could handle this without chopping the mountain tops or leaving the buildings in. And that was developed right here at this table in my secret tropical uh, laboratories. And then uh, it was really rewarding hanging out with those uh, students and also taking the bus and, and the local transport to reach all these destinations I would have never gone otherwise. Um, and yeah, the the. Quality check was always an issue. There were huge misalignments often. And if you look for dangerous mountains and you have the same mountain top twice, then half the mountain turns into vegetation and you get this mountain, which doesn't exist, but it looks like it's covered by solid vegetation, so it's not a dangerous mountain, when in fact it might be a dangerous mountain slope for landslides. Um, and also the topography of the terrain. You know, if you have these two versions and you use them at the same time, you get a completely different topography that looks totally realistic, just is not on Earth. Uh, and uh, when you go then to multiple flights, uh, flights, multiple sorties, then you get even bigger problems. Uh, so we focused a lot of time on quality checking. Uh, I said quality checking so often that eventually I started to sound like quality chicken. Uh, and there, uh, so that worked also well. So people rem were always remembered to do the quality chicken. Along there were so many little stories happening like when I was traveling from one island to the other and I was waiting for this ferry and this cow was waiting too. I had no idea what was going to happen but they were going to put the cow on the ferry also over that little thing there. And the cow didn't like that idea at all. Uh, it just like plumped down because maybe it knew that the butcher was uh, on the other island. Anyway, eventually it jumped off and uh, turned into a sea cow. I like, wow. It, we were like delayed by an hour. Uh, and there were some other farm animals on board which were much easier uh, to, to take along. Uh, and then I met Anahita. Anahita told me about pits. I had never heard about pits before. She told me when you make high resolution canopy height models, you get pits. Even if you make the you know, the points a bit bigger, you still get pits and you can interpolate, but you still get pits and then we developed the pit-free algorithm and she presented it and you must have all met her at Silver Laser 2015 in China or 13, 13. Anyways, I know some of you met her because uh, she sent me a picture of where you were there in China and she told me, look, sometimes the canopy does a really funny thing when you normalize in steep slopes. Yes, that was a slide from my keynote in 2012, and I noticed also when Vancouver Big Trees was uh, posting that they used LIDAR to find big trees. I asked them, do you notice that in the slopes you get the wrong readings from the LIDAR? And they said, yes, we actually get the wrong readings. Uh, and then Anahita did a study on that and confirmed that quantitatively that's always the case. So we decided we need to make a pit-free DSM, so we can find the treetops before normalizing, and that spike-free algorithm came out of that. Uh, and that spike-free algorithm was implemented basically on some island in the Philippines, and I remember it was completed on Valentine's Day. 
because I told her I have a Valentin's uh, surprise for you. Uh, and then that's the algorithm. So it starts from top to bottom and inserts these points. And uh, then you get the spike free tin, which compared to a first return tin looks a lot nicer. And, uh, and then I made you know, a little silly uh, uh, ad campaign for this new algorithm and nobody knew what was going on because we did not only use the first return, we used the returns that made the right uh, kind of top surface. And also in the English released uh, um, data, this was the DSM they released and they also released the LIDAR so I was able to run the, the algorithm and also for building edges where the laser looks under, this makes a much nicer uh, result. And Anahita says hi, she is now with a company uh, doing uh, infrastructure work uh, in, in Holland. Uh, yeah, and what do I do now mostly? Pretty much the same lifestyle except I'm a bit less nomadic, a bit less vagabundic and have more of a home base and that home base is in Costa Rica where I spend about five months right here on this beach and uh, the next five minutes I'll try to entice some of you to maybe visit me, not in large numbers, just sort of in very small numbers, maybe you and the student and your LiDAR device. So I lie a lot in this hammock and think about how I can uh, process LiDAR faster and uh, go surfing and this is my very humble hut, it mainly fits uh, one or two surfboards and my computers but it's got all the basic necessities and I still do the green thing, I started it immediately right in this uh, village when I noticed that they Pipa guys, the ones that sell the cold coconuts, were always putting a paper, plastic straw into the coconut and then people walk on the beach and you find all these plastic straws everywhere. So I, tr I tried, how can we, can we maybe use paper straws? And so I brought these paper straws with me from Germany just as a little experiment and it went through the roof. Everybody loved the paper straw idea. So uh, I had to buy more locally, they weren't available in the village and I had to buy even more because it became a really popular thing. Uh, that you know, the next uh, Pipa guy also wanted the paper straws and then other restaurants said, but we have the eco-plastic straws, is that not good? So I, I, like, I like community science experiments, so I made one myself. So we put the eco straws, the paper straws and the regular plastic straws in my garden right there. This is my land moors, but this is my garden and uh, in this little box I had them and I, I watched what happens. That was after 30 days, after 60 days and after 90 days. After 90 days the paper is basically gone and the eco straws are still there because they really take two years apparently but the experiment is still going. Let's see how long they take. So if you want to protect marine life, these eco plastic straws don't work. You need paper straws or no straws. Uh, and then very frequently in this village, people get really upset when somebody cuts down a tree. And it's a big outcry on Facebook. People put sad faces, angry faces, you know, and then and then a few weeks later, it's all forgotten because nobody remembers this tree anymore, except maybe the immediate neighbors. And I was thinking, hmm. And somebody even, some, somebody in the community just circled, must be in this tree, but it wasn't this tree. I think this is some mango trees and it wasn't a mango tree. And I looked at some older pictures and I said, no, it couldn't have been this tree because it's way too small in this image. And then I went there and took a look. Oh yeah, it's a gigantic mess. This is a protected tree. Did they have the permission to cut it down? Um, I don't know, but it, it looked, you know, very sad. But I, I could not go back and measure how this tree was, which I would have really liked to do. And I was thinking, but I should be able to do this because that's exactly the kind of work I do professionally. And why can I not do it there now where it actually matters? Because while, you know, I'm also caring about the trees in Brazil or somewhere in the middle of the rainforest in Peru, the trees that surround me, they are the, really the closest to my heart and here I could not only make a difference to the tree but I could also excite more local people like regular people, people that just hear about the scientists in the news, I could excite them about the science I'm doing. So maybe, maybe I can do something and then I got the email from Nelson, hey, do you have any light events in, in, in Costa Rica? I saw you in Costa Rica right now. I said, oh, I don't have no light events here scheduled, why? Well, I got this LiDAR drone and, you know, I want to learn LiDAR processing. You got a LiDAR drone and you're in San Jose? Well, come on down, we make a LiDAR event. So he came down with all this equipment and he has this LiDAR USA Snoopy drone and, um, yeah, we flew a drone. I know nothing about operating a drone. Uh, and it, now that I've seen what Evan can do, I want Evan to come and fly his drone because it was uh, challenging. We flew way too high and uh, the alignment was crappy and the density low, but I have 
LiDAR data for that little village now. And that's yeah, at least the immediate trees I have covered. I can measure their heights now. It was a complete mess. The trajectories were wrong. I don't know what I'm doing. But I realized this is an amazing opportunity to learn all these things in an environment which I actually care about for other reasons than I want to get another paper out. And there is a surf beach and plenty of bars with happy hours and, and cocktails. So it's a really nice combination. Uh, so this is the data we got after a lot of help from other people. The trajectories were fit. There was a, a random guy, I don't know him, Louis something. He, he really sent me the final files because they were completely messed up before. The raw data is available if you want to uh, see what went wrong. Um, and we also did a mobile scan, and I was actually able to use the mobile scan already a little bit because my neighbor, he had a green fence. This is about eight, nine meters high, these um, trees. These are um, almendros trees that were always used by the monkeys on the monkey route. And the neighbor cut down the trees and put a concrete wall there. Now, that concrete wall raises the noise, raises the heat, and it completely cuts the, 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 you know, all these crabs used to come out of this, this, the root structures, it's all gone. But I at least documented it. And I thought, okay, this is, this is kind of working. Yeah, I, I was able to document something. Now I really need to process this uh, truck LIDAR more, but unfortunately an Apple fell onto my laptop and destroyed all my initial results because the hard drive broke. So I have to redo it, it set me back a few weeks. But uh, that's what I will do after this conference when I go back to, uh, Costa Rica. So where am I? This is Costa Rica. There is Samara. That's the name of the uh, really cute town. It's just the right combination of expats and locals. It's very harmonic. People are really chilled out. It's Pura Vida style and it's just beautiful. It's uh, this half moon shaped bay. There is a reef. Uh, underwater lighter you could do there as well to uh, um, map the coral reef structures. And uh, Right here is um, the downtown, and I live right here. And I made some money with the last tools. You know, some of you sent me checks, uh, and I don't have a very lavish lifestyle. So one day I noticed this lot was for sale. This is the last big undeveloped lot in this little town. And I thought, oh my God, that some, some big hotel chain is going to buy it and it's going to put a Marriott there with guards at the front, a parking structure. It's going to be. Oh, and all this beautiful green will be gone. And then walked by again and again. And what did I say? Well, I got, I got money now. I could just buy it and stop this from happening. So I bought it. And I just let it grow. So now it's been growing for quite some time. It's completely overgrown uh, with, uh, with vines. I have to cut the vines so they don't kill the trees. And there are some really cool critters living there. And some local species, some not so local species, they also go there and they graze. I put up some signs so that people pay more respect to the land because it was often used just as a garbage lot because it's been vacant for 20 years. And uh, yeah, I call it Samara jungle. It's right in the downtown area. And look at the walls. You see those walls? It's surrounded by walls. That means geoslam techniques should work very well there in order to uh, attach themselves to these vertical structures and it's interesting vegetation right next to it. So you should get really good results. Um, so um, Nelson also did a scan uh, with that Velodyne system uh, of the jungle and I have not really been able to process this data yet. Uh, Tiago helped me uh, and I have yet to review the data due to the hardware crash uh, I had, I was really set back in my processing uh, time. But here's just some uh, velo view pictures. There's a really cool murals on the wall that come out quite nicely in the intensity, even of this uh, older Veldan system. There is a co-working space that opened up. So if you come with two of your students and your LiDAR unit and we scan something, we're gonna go there and meet this air uh, rent this air conditioned uh, space and do the processing of the data and I want to do that for the next 10 or 20 years because I really like it there and I want to stay there so we could you know, build up uh, temporal data sets over time. I don't know if, I'd also there, Mel Gibson has a, has, a, has a house near there and he messed up apparently the, the ecology. Uh, there is a gyrocopter that could be rented to attach uh, a LiDAR unit and do a, a nice baseline scan of maybe 20, 30 square kilometers. I would really like this to happen 
and I know the pilot, and he's been flying there for 15 years. That's three kilometers from from the area. And I'll take you. I'll take you out. This is my sister. I took her out to the little island that's right in front. You can sometimes see whales, dolphins, turtles, rays. It's really nice. And uh, yeah, this all started. The encouragement when I got invited to the Silver Laser in 2012. And sometimes I wonder, you know, there was some misery at the beginning. Sometimes I wonder, had I not been put out of my comfort zone by force and been forced to cross this really scary initial stage of I'm gonna do my own thing now, is it gonna work? I probably would have never done it. I would be still in some boring government lab in the US and, 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 and code some boring algorithms I don't care about. So maybe a strategy to innovation is really a new slogan, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, or the short form. Uh, so uh, I think I invited you. Uh, if you come, uh, the first cocktail is on me. This is my favorite bar. This is just, uh, just right across from this little piece of land I bought. And with this, I thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>